So welcome to the third installment of competition series. So, so far we talked about reasons to enter competitions and where to find some. But today, let's talk about which one you should be choosing. So let me be level with you in this one. During my competition career, I've won several competitions, actually almost 20 competitions, winning about $24,000 in prize cash and a quarter million dollars in awarded construction budget. I get a lot of questions about how I did that and how you could get into a position like that. And my answer to that is actually quite simple. First thing you should do is to choose your competitions wisely. But you may not be too sure which one to enter if you're just starting out. So hopefully this video will give you a definitive guide to which one you should be entering. So, but let's get the facts straight. Competitions are tough. There will only be a couple winners amongst hundreds if not thousands of entrants. So you kind of have to make sure that you set your expectations correctly. And this becomes the basis of what we're going to be talking about uh, from now on. Statistically speaking, winning a competition is very difficult. Figures given by the 120 hours in 2016, there were almost 2,800 entrants and there were only about, you know, 10 people that were recognized as the top 3. And if we look at the infamous Guggenheim Helsinki, there were 1,700 companies that entered as a part of the competition and in the end, only for that competition to be scrapped completely. So the path of competition is somewhat tough, but this doesn't have to be the case for you. Competition all comes down to risk and reward ratio. So I'll quickly walk you through some of the dynamics and economics behind the comp architecture competitions. And in the end, I'll give you a guide to creating your own spreadsheet so that you can optimize the competitions with the best chance of winning. Are you ready? Let's dive right into it. So when it comes to any kind of risky venture, we have to balance risk and reward ratio. Let's take a look on architectural context. So on the risk side, we first have to make sure that we're entering the right skill level, we don't commit too much for little reward, and of course make sure that there aren't too many competitors for going for the same reward. And on the reward side, we actually made a previous video about all the reasons we should enter competitions, so if you want to learn more about the reward side, make sure to check out that video. So in this video, we're going to be focusing more on the risk side. First one on the risk is the skill level. Skill levels vary greatly between architecture competitions. Some of them are specifically for students, and some of them are specifically for professionals. There are some that require skill levels in certain areas like visualization, and other parts require more specialization in construction. So with that being said, how do we know if this competition is the right skill level for you? There are a couple ways to garner this. If this is an annual competition or if the organizer has done something similar before, then look at the previous winners and the projects that the organizer has had. Um, are you able to match or one-up the previous winner's quality? If that is the case, then it might be worth a chance. If not, maybe you should be experimenting more with your skills, get another team member who is able to fill in that gap, or look for another competition. Number two is commitment. We also have to make sure that we're putting in the right amount of commitment for the right amount of reward. Even though some competitions may be giving out thousands of dollars or really nice projects, if, you're, if they require a lot of commitment with too much risk, then it's definitely not worth entering. And the commitment comes in these categories. Some competitions require high entry fee that sometimes don't quite justify the means of entering that. And second is the production quality and quantity. So in order to check this, make sure to go through the brief and look at how many panels they require and also look at previous winners and look at the quality of the drawings that they have produced. And last but not least, we'll get to optimization with a spreadsheet at the end, but the idea basically is that you want to minimize your com uh, commitment as much as possible for biggest amount of reward when you're choosing your competition. I brought up some of the competitions with the least amount of risk in my previous video, Architecture Competition Websites, so make sure to check that out if you're interested. So the third is the competitor analysis. Competitor analysis is all about looking, kind of like estimating how many people will be entering, what kind of demographics are coming in here, to make sure that you fit in and if you have edge over all the others. And also you gotta think about like how famous these competitions are, how prestigious they are. Sometimes you might want to go for the most interesting and the most famous one, but it could actually be detrimental in maximizing your chance of winning. So in, a, in one way of doing that is by going into competitor website or competition websites such as Bustler. So Bustler.net is one of the examples where they aggregate all the competitions. And 
If you look on the left side, it's like a complete master list of all the competitions. And on the right side are promoted competitions. So these are these competitions have a lot more budget and they tend to like put on the advertisements on various social media, which means that they get more exposures and more entrance. So that actually reduces the chance of winning because there are more people entering and there's higher chance of people with higher skill entering these competitions. So what I actually recommend is for you to go through competitions that are not promoted. So those will be the ones on the left side. The ones without any images or embedded videos are the ones that are low budget competitions that are not putting in too much effort into advertising their competitions. So I strongly recommend you check these out and find the ones for you. All right, last but not least, we will get into how to optimize your competitions. So what I want you to do is first go through these competition websites and make a full list of all the competitions that you want to enter. And another thing that I recommend you do is to see if you can find opportunities to resubmit your projects. So if you've done a project for school or for another competition but you were never recognized, then see if you can find a similar competition that asks for a similar kind of brief. Then you don't have to, you can minimize the amount of work that you're doing for the same amount of reward ratio. So if you're able to enter like five different competitions with the same entry, I think you should definitely go for that. And what this effectively allows you to do is for you to compile all the energy that would have used for five different competitions into one that would improve your project quality than you would have if you divided all your attention between five different competitions. And just in case you're wondering, this has been presented, people have done this before. I have seen entries won like first place in one competition and the same project wins like, you know, honorable mention or third place in the other. So don't be afraid to resubmit your school project or another competition's project in another competition to minimize your risk. All right, with that being said, let's look at how you can create a spreadsheet so you can visualize and optimize your choices of competition. So what I would do is to go to a competition organization websites like Bustler and sort the projects by submission date and then find the date that I want to submit by. Let's say I want to submit by the um, end of August because that's when my school starts, for example. So you want to make sure your competition finishes then, right? So now that the competitions are organized from like, you know, most recent all the way to like more further in the future, start categorizing all of these. Just read through all the briefs and see which ones interest you the most. And what you'll realize is that some of them are a little bit similar to another. So see if you can catch two birds in one stone by finding competitions that you think is interesting as well as duplicated by other competitions. I think these days, most common type of competitions revolve around COVID-19 because this is the biggest world topic at the moment. So those will be the competitions like Future Now or Humankind after COVID-19 and even the future of work that we are hosting right here. Once you've compiled a list of competitions, start plotting them into a chart like this one. This is a spreadsheet that I used in 2015 for competitions that I've entered. Um, I only have about six competitions here, but sometimes I would start with like 10 and start cutting them down from there on. So name of the competition goes first, and then the registration and submission deadline right next to it. We'll just write quick descriptions of what they are and what similarities they have. And on the fourth column or the fifth column here is the amount of production. So this is the part where we're optimizing the amount of production and quality. So these three columns basically delineate the amount of commitment or slash risk that you're taking on. So those comes in the form of the amount of amount and the quality of entry. So delivery column is more like the quantity. So this will be like assessing the qu quantity of the submission. And the second column here is about quality of the competition. So basically these two kind of like multiply with each other. Um, if there is if there is a lot of submission requirement and high level of quality required, then your work is gonna magnify from there. And as mentioned earlier, we will use previous winners and the jury list to kind of get a sense of what kind of quality is required for this competition. And then last but not least is basically the prize as well as all any kind of reward that you can reap out of these competitions. Once you graph these out, you'll start to be able to kind of like visualize which competitions are worth it and which ones are not. So that has been my two cents on choosing your competitions. Using this methodology, you'll be able to maximize your chance of winning from the get-go. In the next video, we're going to get to the good part, which is going to be how to win competitions. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and tune in next time.
So if you want to learn more about landing a successful career in architecture, I encourage you to check out our Starchitects Bootcamp. It's a four-week program with a condensed list of my favorite tips and tricks that I think architecture students must know, but for some reason schools don't teach you. And that includes subjects like how to get a job, how to design your portfolio, doing project management, and even running your own business. So if you're curious about that, you can check it out on our website, and I'll see you in the next video.